Hey there guys, welcome to my reaction video to the third trailer that released for Resident Evil 4 Remake. And it's a pretty interesting trailer because there is a lot of gameplay and I did not expect uh, new Capcom to showcase this much gameplay in this trailer as well as with the story content. But it was pretty exciting, let me tell you. I did enjoy it. But let's just get into this. You see, we are all connected through the Holy Body. So, uh, Sadler says we are all connected through the Holy Body, which I assume means he's referring to the Plaga. When you need only accept this so we have this sequence now, and you can see right there, uh, there are ripples in the Tell water. The you see like how uh, Leon's shining his flashlight right there, and those, there are those two ripples on the water? I think they're doing the same thing like they're doing back in uh, Resident Evil 7 in the end of Zoe DLC, and also in Resident Evil Village, where certain enemies will be hiding uh, inside this water. And I think this is the area that Leon is in after he survives that pitfall trap before uh, he gets on to Vertigo's boss fight. But it looks like they've expanded upon it a bit more. And it looks a lot more uh, grisly. Looks like there's a, a definite amount of history involved with the number of uh, skulls that you're seeing right here and just a number of mounting pikes. So I wonder if they'll expand this area a bit more because it was just kind of there in Resident Evil 4, but this remake might do more with it. So this is different. So this is introducing us to the Plaga Type Cs, and the Plaga Type Cs work differently now, it seems. So previously, in the original version of Resident Evil 4, Plaga Type Cs emerged like normal. You just dealt enough physical trauma to the enemy, and the Plaga Type C would emerge. And then once you killed the host, the Plaga Type C could actually... Uh, detach from its host and start attacking you, and it could only survive for a short amount of time. But it looks like in this remake, Plaga Type C's, it's, they almost behave like infectors from Dead Space now. Like, I don't know if Leon actually dealt physical trauma to this Ganado, and this Plaga Type C is just emerging, and now it's just like combining with his back or something. Or this Plaga Type C was just roaming the hallways, and it just found this Ganado, and now it's enhancing it. That seems very interesting that they would do that because the regular plaga is not able to survive without a host it could only survive for a very short amount of time if it was not attached to a host that's why plaga type c's in the original version of resident evil 4 died out after a short amount of time Christ. but as you see right here uh, it looks like the ganados are going to be a lot faster when the plaga type c is controlling and, and also you'll see in the bottom right uh right by the hud there's some kind of chest or something right next to the gun what is that i'm not entirely sure what that is it looks like a dresser or something is that supposed to be a key item that he has no idea but he carries this item for an extended amount of time uh, as he's going through this castle area and it's nice to get some shots of the castle so i'm not entirely sure what this room is i think this is the room that uh you go to after you do um that art gallery uh attack that's that Salazar sets up for you, and it looks like they've changed it a bit. Like she did. And this is different. So, is that supposed to be Leon right there? And interesting how he's here. Like we never actually saw this ritual take place in the original version of Resident Evil 4, but it looks like they've expanded upon uh, this area from Chapter 5 of Resident Evil 4. I mean, this is the area that you went to in Chapter 5 after you did the bulldozing sequence, but it looks like they made the room a lot larger, and they've made it more medieval-like, and they've added uh, like female Ganado, it seems, and then Sadler is actually uh, without his, his hood on, but interesting how they're changing this now. So I'm guessing what happens is Sadler is able to take control of uh, Leon and Ashley, and he gets uh, Ashley to lay on the table while Leon is just paralyzed right here. She did. And as you can see right here, it looks like uh, Sadler's eyes are blue now. I don't remember his eyes being blue in the original version of Resident Evil 4. And also his, his head is deformed, and I'm guessing this means the Plaga has spread to his head or something. Which is why it's deforming his head, and maybe this is where the extremity of mutation will occur in his case. And also, uh, some of the lines he was saying, let me hear them again. She did. Okay, it's not that important. 
So, uh, yeah, he's talking again about the Plaga and how uh, it starts out an egg form and then eventually hatches and starts taking control of the subject's nervous system. And this is different, so uh, Ashley has been taken over by the Plaga temporarily. And she steals Leon's knife somehow. Temperance, child. Now, this is very strange. I did not expect uh, Ashley to be saying these kind of things. I mean, that, that's very odd that the Plaga would... I mean, is it though? Because, like, they are used social organisms, so maybe um, when they've heard enough of, like, the host just chanting, it eventually uh, becomes ingrained into their mindset, and so when they're actually infecting a host, the, the host then starts to say things that they likely heard other uh, hosts saying. But it's still very odd that um, the, the Plaga is able to alter Ashley's... Uh, grammar and actually um, change her vernacular, change her uh, her word choice. It's a very odd choice because we've never really seen this demonstrated with um, with the Plagas and their hosts in the original version of Resident Evil 4. And it, it, this feels more like um, with Evelyn, I would say. Like, with Evelyn, I could understand uh, changing the host's vernacular and grammatical structure, but not with the Plagas. Even though I've already explained that they are used social organisms. But either way, um, this is essentially the remake's way of showing uh, Ashley has been taken over by the Plaga temporarily. How exactly um, Leon breaks her out of this, I don't know. But we do know that in the original version of Resident Evil 4, when Leon was uh, temporarily controlled by the Plaga and he was about to um, suffocate Ada, she stabbed him in the knee and kicked him away, and that seemed to uh, stop the control for the moment before Leon is ultimately able to remove the Plaga from his body thanks to the special radiation provided by Luis when he was researching uh, how to prevent Plagas from actually being destroyed or just removed from the hosts. But we'll have to see how it's presented in the remake. And we have some gameplay right here, so I'm, I'm amazed that they showed it like this. Like, the enemies just running into each other and pushing each other around. <laughs> it just looks very silly with the way it's presented, but... I can't say I'm looking forward to this sequence. I know exactly what the sequence is. This is the elevator sequence that precedes Salazar's boss fight. And that was one of the worst parts of Resident Evil 4. Because that sequence drained your ammo, and if you went into Salazar's boss fight with not a lot of ammunition, it was a miserable encounter. And that's why you had to save a lot of magnum ammo for him. It was like 19 magnum rounds you had to pump into Salazar in order to kill him, which was so retarded. And I could understand you buying the rocket launcher before Salazar, because he, he just doesn't deserve any respect. He's a really bad boss. And I don't expect the remake to improve Salazar's boss fight, because they didn't bother improving Salazar's boss fight in the VR version of Resident Evil 4. They actually made him worse, with certain changes in his programming, with making him faster... And it's just so bad. It, it's definitely one of the worst boss fights ever made in Resident Evil history. And Salazar's the worst boss ever in Resident Evil 4, I would say. But I just really hope that this remake fixes a lot of the pacing issues with chapters uh, 3, 4, and 5. Because certain sequences dragged out uh, a little too long, and certain sequences weren't well designed. And may maybe they'll fix it, but I'm not expecting much from new Capcom if they're going to be acting like the Resident Evil Village team, because this is the Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil 2 Remake team handling this game. Delivery preparing some entertainment for you. Ah, the entertainment. Here we have some more encounters, and that guy looks like he's about to transform because his head is not attached to his body correctly. So it, it means that he's going to be an enemy that will transform into a Plaga when enough physical trauma has been dealt to him. And you have to use your knife in order to deal with him. You, you have to finish him off with a knife if you want to stop the mutation. I assume there may be other ways of actually dealing with the Plagas, aside from using your knife. But that remains to be seen. And watch this. Look at that. You can actually deflect the Plaga Type A's uh, slash attack. I was not expecting that. And you can definitely use the crouch against that move, which is very handy, because the, the, the actual whip attack that the Plaga Type A's did in Resident Evil 4 was one of the most annoying attacks ever, because not only could it go through the geometry, but it had a lot of range. And whenever they were getting off the ground, they spammed that attack to keep you off of them. 
And um, I, I just hope that the Plagas in this game don't have an absurd amount of life, because in Resident Evil 5, the Plagas could take at least, like, 8 shotgun shells, like, 8 to 10 shotgun shells before they died, and it was really stupid that way. Whereas in Resident Evil 4, it took roughly, um, like, 2 to 4 shots from the shotgun to actually take out a Plaga. It, it could be more sometimes, but that was because of the higher enemy types that you encountered later on in Resident Evil 4. But I just hope that this game doesn't force the merchant upon you to just force you to arbitrarily upgrade the damage on your weapons to at least stand a chance against these enemies. I'm really hoping that they'll not force the merchant upon you and just make it like an RPG game. But again, it's new Capcom, so anything can go with them, even if it's really stupid. Oh, there, and there's an explosive barrel as well, so they brought that back. And also, uh, Leon counters this Plaga right here, so this is a Plaga type Beta, or Plaga type B. And this is the one that will kill you instantly if it, uh, if it grabs you, because that's what they did in the original version of Resident Evil 4. And because it's an instant kill attack, that's why the prompt is uh, different for countering. That's why it's in the center of your screen. And most likely, uh, this move will cause your knife durability to be uh, completely diminished. So Leon will actually break his knife when he's countering this instant kill attack, just like with the chainsaw, man. So it's it's very interesting that, that they've made it this way. So they've made... Uh, the instant kill attacks in this remake uh, have a special prompt to them that will allow you to counter them, and then it will deplete your knife's durability. And it doesn't just apply to the Chainsaw Man, it also applies to the Plaga Type Bs. And I can't say I remember a lot of uh, instant kill attacks in uh, in Resident Evil 4. I mean, the Chainsaw Man was one, the Plaga Type Beta was one, um, were there any other enemy types that could instantly kill you in Resident Evil 4? I mean, there was the Garador when he did that running attack on you. And, uh, the Garadors are back in this game, which is interesting. So, they, they really, uh, stayed true to their word and said that they're not cutting out areas and they're not cutting out enemies. Even enemies like the Novisa Door are returning in this remake, which is interesting. I didn't expect them to be able to do that. I didn't think they could put flying enemies... I mean, then again, they did so in, in Resident Evil Village, so I guess it makes sense that they would have the skill and knowledge necessary to put in flying enemies now, so that's why the Navisadors would return, but I didn't really consider the Navisadors to be an enemy that would return, just like with the giant spiders in Resident Evil 2. They didn't return in Resident Evil 2 Remake, and uh, a lot of enemies didn't return in Resident Evil 3 Remake, but uh, yeah, they've really tried to make sure they, they're not cutting out areas in this remake. And this is a sequence I did not expect to return. They brought back the catapult sequence at the very beginning of Chapter 3. This is very interesting. So, yeah, like, a, a lot of these sequences that you wouldn't really expect, because you probably thought they were arcadey or the like, they, they're actually returning in this game. It's, it's so surprising. I did not think they would bring back sequences like this. <laughs> and it looks pretty much like an onslaught. Um, in the original version of Resident Evil 4, uh, getting the sequence started was the tricky part, but once you got past the initial barrage of uh, catapult attacks, uh, you could then um, deal with the enemies, and they could die instantly. Like the, the enemies were designed in such a way where you could kill them instantly, not just with the barrels, but also just by shooting them, which was really well designed for that initial part to Chapter 3. And there were enemies alongside them that would actually follow you and try to grab Ashley or attack you. So, it looks like this sequence is going to be a lot harder, just based on the onslaught that I'm seeing right here. <laughs> and Luis is here, and Luis has a bigger role in this game. He's actually uh, lasting longer in this remake compared to having him be killed in, uh, in Chapter 3, in, in Chapter 3-3 specifically. And it looks like uh, he has those pills that suppress the growth of the parasite. I wonder why uh, it's it looks like that. It's not like an actual uh, pill capsule. It's just some random container with tape on it. Very strange that it would look like that. And this is new. Okay, and so they brought back the two El Gigante boss fight, which I did not like in the original version of Resident Evil 4. I mean, for, for one thing, 
the, they made it where you could not kill both of the El Gigante with the trap. You could only kill one of them. And even when you got both of the El Gigantes on top of the trap, you would not be able to kill both of them. You could only kill one of them, and then the other one would just teleport off of the uh, platform. And it was so stupid. And you just dragged out the fight that way by just like climbing up the ladder, dropping down, attacking the El Gigante with your knife while it was busy shaking the platform you were originally on. And it just became a, a very tedious, boring fight. That's not even a fight at that point. Like, if they're already giving you a safe option for dealing with the El Gigante once you get rid of the first one, and it feels just as safe as what it would be like had you just dropped both of the El Gigante into this trap, why the fuck would they design it like that in Resident Evil 4, where you can't kill both of them? It makes no sense. But here, it looks like they're making it where uh, Luis is going to support you. And you'll be able to take on both of them, but I doubt Luis will be much help here. I really don't see how he could be a help. I mean, there might be some co-op action involved where uh, Luis will wait by some switch, and you'll be able to command him to maybe like open the platform up to kill the El Gigante. And you can see that same platform is right there, although I, I don't really see the, the boilers uh, along the walls. That was everything as well in the original version of Resident Evil 4. Like, for some reason, you couldn't get an El Gigante to charge into the boilers and therefore, like, damage themselves from the molten metal that was there. It, they really missed out on an opportunity to make the fight creative, but they've removed those boilers from the sides of the room now, or maybe I'm just not seeing it right now. But I can't say I'm looking forward to this fight, and I have mixed feelings about this fight. I mean, it's cool that they're bringing Luis in, but I just don't think he's going to do anything in this fight. And most likely, they'll remove a lot of these co-op actions on the hardest difficulty. Games do this sometimes, where uh, they make it impossible to do certain co-op actions uh, on like harder difficulties or something. I, I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure there are games like that, and I feel like this game will be one of them. And that right there, we have the female uh, Chainsaw Ganado. And this is the room uh, after you take on Vertigo. So this is the room that you enter when you're first getting into the mine area. Or I'm sorry, this is not the mine area. I mean, this is one part of the mines. This is where the Plagas were excavated. So I'm guessing in place of files, we'll probably have Luis uh, explain to Leon what exactly happened here. They're using Luis as like a vessel for storytelling content, basically. They, they might be using him like that. If that's the case, that's cool. And I just wonder like, if, if we'll hear more of the scientist within him, because Luis was a scientist. He, he doesn't portray himself as such in the games. But this would be a very interesting avenue to take. But, um... I remember this sequence being very dull in the original version of Resident Evil 4, and this was a sequence where you could use the rocket launcher to destroy the boulder that was blocking your path, but maybe they've replaced it with something else. And that right there, that, that was not Luis punishing a flinch animation with an animation. That's just a standard kick that he can do sometimes, and it'll just knock the enemy to the ground, and then you can finish him off. It could be reliable. Maybe you can finish off Chainsaw Ganado when they're on the ground like that. I doubt it, though, because I imagine they'll want to favor that cheap rather than just saying, Oh, it's a special enemy type, so you can't use a move that elicits common sense like that. It's, or at least give some kind of justification for why uh, you can't use them. I mean, maybe it will take two um, knife executions, just like in Evil Within 2. where Or, or like in Evil Within 1, for instance, with the traumas. And then in Evil Within 2, you had... Um, the hysterics and the laments taking two sneak kills in order to kill them. So maybe with the chainsaw Ganado, it will take two uses of your knife in order to finish him off. And here we have it, Krauser. And I gotta say, guys, Krauser's voice actor is very strange. Listen to this. Long time no see. See, listen to that. Like, that doesn't sound like an American accent. Or in, in, like, why does Krauser sound like he's been smoking? Or, or like he's an old man? Like his actual vocal cords haven't withstood the test of time or something. It, it doesn't really satisfy his like young age or something. Because I'm pretty sure... I, I don't know exactly uh, how old Krauser is during the time of Resident Evil 4 or during Dark Side Chronicles. But it, I just don't like his voice actor. It, it sounds pretty bad. see. Long time no see. Major Krauser? He says Agent Krauser. 
Yeah, Krauser doesn't look uh, American. Was he actually? I'm pretty sure he was American in Dark Side Chronicles and in Resident Evil 4, but he just sounds so different. And his knife looks the same. His knife looks exactly the same as like how it was in the original version of Resident Evil 4. I don't see the snake emblem though because of the motion blur. Why? And we have the scythe Ganado again. You can. I think he's using the mine thrower right here, not like an explosive tip crossbow. And you can see it right there, and it explodes. And the enemies have shields now. I mean, j just like in the original version of Resident Evil 4. It looks pretty cool. And there's an enemy uh, grabbing Ashley. I'm not sure what he was doing. Was he trying to choke her out? I'm, I'm guessing this is an animation that he does to put Ashley into the dying state. It might be that. And there's a suplex, so uh, I don't think the suplex is going to be uh, as good as Resident Evil 5 suplex. And also, um, the, the suplex in Resident Evil 4 was not a good animation. I mean, it increased your chances of getting a decapitation and preventing a uh, Plaga mutation. But it wasn't 100% consistent. And not only that, but it wasn't a good crowd control technique. And you could not take advantage of the stumble mechanic when you were doing the uh, suplex. So whenever there were enemies in front of you, and you did the suplex, you couldn't knock them back with the stumble mechanic. So they would just walk towards you while you were busy recovering from the suplex and just immediately attack you. So yeah, the, the, the suplex was a pretty bad animation in Resident Evil 4, and they improved it in Resident Evil 5 when they uh, gave Josh the, the suplex and they made it an instant kill, because that, that was how you could instantly kill enemies in Resident Evil 5, and it was a really cool mechanic. But it doesn't look that useful here. And we have Ashley's section, so she's using a lantern now. She, so she's not actually throwing lanterns at enemies, she's actually using it herself, and the lantern is blue for some reason. I'm not sure what that is. Is that an armaduro? What is that? Hmm, that's not a. Yeah, that, that is an armaduro. You can see the helmet. So they brought back. Wow! They brought back the armaduros in this remake. I did not expect that either. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this might be the most perfect remake ever. This is definitely uh, proving to be a very ambitious remake compared to Resident Evil 1 remake, Resident Evil 2 remake, and Resident Evil 3 remake. This might be the best remake ever. Although, the mechanically, it probably won't be, because New Capcom will just remove mechanics by the drove on the hardest difficulty. But yeah, the, the enemy types... I did not expect them to bring this enemy type back, that's really cool. I mean, that being said though, the Admodulos weren't used that well in uh, Resident Evil 4, because the, the room that they put you in when you were fighting those uh, Admodulos, when you got the... Um, was it the King's Chalice? Yeah, it was the King's Chalice, I believe. Um, you got the King's Chalice, and then you had to fight a bunch of Armaduros in a really tiny room. And the controls and the movement just wasn't befitting for this kind of close combat encounter. And you, you had to use the shotgun against them, you, you had to run around them and force them to uh, go into that very lengthy turning animation if you wanted to stand a chance. It was a really bad encounter. I really don't know what they were thinking with that encounter. It was very awkward, and you had to rely upon very like clunky, cumbersome movement, and just relying upon very strange turning animations, and just like gaming the system if you wanted to stand a chance against the Armaduros in that sequence. And uh, at least flash grenades can kill them when you expose the Plaga. I still don't know if um, there's a human inside of the suit of armor, or if the Plaga has actually like matured so much that it's actually uh, grown inside each of the armor pieces, and that's why it's able to... Uh... I mean, and then again, if that were the case, uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have such fluid motion. I mean, it would be like stumbling all over the place, it would be holding the sword very awkwardly, and then I wonder if um, Vertigo is supposed to be like the fully mature form of the Plaga. I hope they explain that in this remake, because I've never understood how the Admaduros work. It's very confusing. And here's the dreaded water room area. So this is one of the worst rooms ever made in a Resident Evil game by far. There is zero thought put into how the water room area worked in the original version of Resident Evil 4. There were just so many enemies, and you had to get the sniper rifle from the merchant if you wanted to at least stand a chance against the crossbowmen. And if you didn't have the sniper rifle, you would have to pretty much um, like activate the pressure plates 
try to get Ashley back to the door by having her be grabbed by a Ganado and just hope that she doesn't get hit by a shield guy because the shield guys were very broken in the original version of Resident Evil 4 with mailing her while she was being grabbed by a Ganado. And she could take damage. And not only that, but when she cowered, she could cower right near downed enemies. And there was a lot of ambiguity with how close uh, the Ganado was to the door. And you had to bypass the enemies. And the enemies just spawned out of the blue when you activated the pressure plates. It was just such a badly designed sequence. And I can't believe I at one point said that it was legitimately hard. It is not legitimately hard. It is a badly designed room. It is a terrible room. I would honestly say it's the worst room ever in Resident Evil 4 by far, because not only is it the first like bad encounter, but it really stands out as just being a badly designed room. And I just hope to God this remake fixes that. I mean, I understand that there were certain moments where Resident Evil 4's development was rushed, like with the story, because uh, Shinji Mikami did mention that the story in the original version of Resident Evil 4 was built over the span of like two weeks because they ran out of time. And there was some lacking quality display with certain sections. Like, a, a lot of the sections, actually, in uh, chapters 3, 4, and 5 of Resident Evil 4. And the water room was, like, the biggest culprit of this. But I just don't see this remake improving upon it. And it, it looks pretty identical. There are some changes. It looks a little dark. And um, there are some gaps here and there. But um, I'm hoping with the improved mechanics... Uh, it'll make the sequence a lot more bearable, but you can see, like, up top, there is that uh, balcony up there. That's where a uh, crosswoman would be standing. And you can understand why it would be impossible to kill these crosswomen with your pistol or your shotgun, because the sway on your pistol when you were aiming was unbelievable. It's the worst sway I've ever seen in a game by far. And that's not even comparing to, like, the, the random variable on your pistol when you were aiming your gun in the Evil Within, specifically with the pistol and the Magnum. But I would honestly say the sway is even worse compared to the random variable on your pistol in the Evil Within. But, like, how you dealt with those two crosswomen without the sniper rifle, th there was just no thought put into it. And then you had the onslaughts of enemies just spawning continuously if you killed the enemies. And then you had, like, those initial uh, groups of enemies just standing right in front of you when you first enter the room. And you, you had to pretty much use a grenade and aim it on, like, the right-hand side to kill most of the enemies, but not all of them, in order to prevent the additional spawn from occurring. But the additional spawn would still occur when you activated those pressure plates. And, yeah, th th there's so much to explain about that room. It's just a terrible room. but And I don't see it improving anytime soon in this remake. You gotta keep but you can see right here, the side guys still have the ability to throw their sides. That's very dangerous. And it was also pretty dangerous in the original version of Resident Evil 4. Because the startup frames, like the, the actual startup animation for doing either their melee attack or their uh, side throw ability, it was the same. So there was some ambiguity as, as to whether they were doing the melee attack or the range attack. I mean, at times it was self-explanatory if they ran towards you and then they just started like doing that animation at a distance. Because you knew it was the side throw. But at times they could do the side throw when they were pretty close to you. And it could be very uh, deceptive like that. But um, you can see right here... You can crouch under that, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's a range attack though, so I should definitely expect that from any game ever. I mean, where I want to see the, the crouch applied is with like the standard melee attacks. That's what I want to see. And while it's cool that you can crouch under, under the range attacks... I want to see what crouching is like against like the, the typical melee attacks, because I'm pretty sure you can crouch under the uh, Plaga Type A's uh, like range attack, like when it's doing that standard whip attack. But um, with other attacks, I'm not really sure. And also, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like this scythe collided with the axe that this enemy threw. Like, you, you hear that clanging noise, I think it collided. So can enemy projectiles collide with each other? Look at that. That's very interesting. Oh, and they've also brought back this sequence. This is a sequence I was not expecting to return. I thought this was a pretty arcadey sequence, and it didn't really make sense with the way it worked in, um, in Resident Evil 4, but they brought it back here, so that's very odd. That is really odd indeed. Together. Thanks. Then come, Sancho. What is Luis holding? Then come, Sancho Panther. Let us rescue the Princess Dulcinea! You gotta hurt yourself. 
<laughs> so it seems like we might be with Luis like more this time around, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Mm. Oh, and they brought back this. I mean, I already had a feeling this would be back here, but I didn't expect it to return like this. It looks like you get a machine gun as part of the merchant. And look at the flinch animations when this guy is shooting him. Seems very odd that it's not an instant kill. I would expect the helicopter pilot to instantly kill the enemies, like he did in the original version of Resident Evil 4. I mean, sometimes it wasn't, but the, the stun lock was not so long to allow the enemy to just live. They were pretty much dead the moment the stun lock began. But yeah, that, that stun lock looks very silly. And the, the projectiles look pretty bad as well. I can't say I'm a big fan of how the uh, helicopter's projectiles look. I mean, it's, it's nice that um, you can easily see it, but I just wish the effect looked a lot better. Oh my god, that flinch animation looks so silly. And you have the machine guns right here, so this guy's playing on easy difficulty, so he's surviving. And you also notice the, the knife HUD element looks different, so I think Leon's using the kitchen knife, rather than his classic combat knife. So I, I wonder if the, the HUD element is different for each individual knife that you get. Hmm. So we already know the, the helicopter pilot's name is Mike. He sounds very different here. <laughs> he sounds like a cliched, uh, like, Vietnam veteran or something. <laughs> very strange. Like, he has that gr grammatical structure, the vernacular, like, specific word choice. I, I, I much prefer Mike's voice acting and his, uh, his choice of words in the original version of Resident Evil 4 compared to this. It just sounds very cheesy. And just really silly. And I thought Mike was a pretty young kid. This guy just sounds like a seasoned veteran, which is odd. And then we have this. This is the minecart sequence from uh, Chapter 4 of uh, Resident Evil 4. Only this time, uh, it's more like uh, an on-rail sequence rather than just uh, a moving platform that you're standing on. And you're still uh, doing like the classic Resident Evil 4 gameplay. So, like, this is its own section now, its own unique set piece. And you have unlimited ammo right here, so you're using, uh, I'm guessing you're using Luis's Red 9 pistol. And the minecart has its own health, and then you have the enemies right here, so I don't know why the, uh, the enemies are in their own minecarts. I don't really see how, uh, they could have possibly constructed this network of tunnels <laughs> to allow the, the minecarts to, like, flow like this. It's very odd. I, I don't understand how you could build anything like this, or why the enemies would think to just be in these minecarts, but I just question how they can attack Leon. They, they might be throwing, uh, axes or something, but th you, then you have the chainsaw guy, and... If it's a single minecart, then it's clear the enemies can't get inside, so what is their method for attacking you, I wonder? Yeah, so it, it just seems like they've modeled this sequence after Resident Evil 6, because Resident Evil 6 had like a similar level of craziness with the way uh, like the, the speed of the minecart was, with like the directions you were going, uh, with the enemies you were dealing with. So they modeled it after Resident Evil 6, it seems. Only this time, uh, you're actually having to control the minecart, and then you have the option of pressing uh, the aim button to aim your pistol to shoot these uh, explosive canisters. And these explosive barrels were in Resident Evil 6 as well, but they were completely useless in the minecart sequence for Resident Evil 6. And it looks like some enemies have... Oh, okay, they have crossbow bolts, I see. So then what, do, what is the chainsaw guy going to do right here? This is interesting. This is really interesting. I just hope to god the sequence isn't bad. And like, the uh, original version of Resident Evil 4, if you didn't have flash grenades, the minecart sequence was a mess. And the problem was, in the original version of Resident Evil 4, because of the way flash grenades detonated, where uh, they had to make a uh, collision with uh, like a surface or something in order to detonate, uh, there were just a lot of moments where uh, there was ambiguity as to the distance Leon was throwing his flash grenades. So at times his flash grenades would fall through the geometry, or just fall through an opening, or it wouldn't make contact with the, the ground that the enemies were standing on. And so the, the, the flash wouldn't trigger properly. And they fixed this in the VR version with the timed feature where you could pull the pin, wait for a bit, and then throw your grenade to actually time the detonation, which was definitely needed in that minecart sequence in the VR version of Resident Evil 4. Ahead. You're kidding. Whoa. 
absolutely insane. Like, I did not expect him to up the craziness like this. I mean, to be fair, though, this is not even, like, the craziest Resident Evil has gotten, because, like, Ethan Winters has gone through so much more in terms of craziness, and just the short time he's been in, in Resident Evil 7 and Village, compared to Leon. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I can't consider this to be crazy after Resident Evil 7 and Village. Ethan Winters has gone through so much more. As he said in Resident Evil 7, now I've seen everything. And that perfectly justified him saying, I wish it would stay like this forever in Resident Evil Village when he was living a peaceful life. And then he, then you had those crazy moments where he was captured by uh, Damitresk in, in her beast form and he was forced to fight her. And he fell from the top of the cathedral uh, down to the bottom level and he only had uh, Damitresk's uh, body in order to save him. And then you had Heisenberg and his entire boss fight, and Ethan was flung through the air. He grabbed onto the um, metal polymer composite artillery device and just destroyed Heisenberg with a cannon shot. <laughs> and then he was dealing with Miranda, and Miranda is on a whole other level, just like with Heisenberg and Lady Domitres. He was also dealing with... Uh, with, with Beneviento, he was dealing with Moreau, he did ziplining. <laughs> it's absolutely insane! Like, how much Ethan Winters has gone through in terms of craziness compared to Leon from Resident Evil uh, 2 to Resident Evil 6. And I don't even think this is as crazy as what Ethan Winters has gone through. So yeah, Leon, you'll never be as seasoned as Ethan Winters. And he's a seemingly normal individual with no fighting experience, and you're just an agent doing like typical things that an agent would do <laughs> oh man like the impact of this sequence would be greater if ethan winters was doing this sequence <laughs> I you're kidding but you gotta love the charm right here even if it is pretty silly <laughs> uh, yes, so this is the i'm guessing the queen plaga and I'm pretty sure this is the part where uh, Salazar and the last Vertigo uh, combines with the Mother Plaga to become his boss fight. Or is this supposed to be the Navisador nest? I, I think this is actually the nest. There are glowing areas on this nest, which I'm guessing is some form of protein just developing inside or something. Because there, there are those kind of bioluminescent uh, substances produced by uh, glowworms, for instance, or bioluminescence in uh, bacteria. So I'm guessing it's something here with the, the plaga. So yeah, I, I don't know if this is the queen plaga or if this is a novisador nest. And where exactly is this sequence? I can't say I recognize the sequence from the uh, original version of Resident Evil 4. I mean, it bears similarities to the Navisador nest that you encountered the second time you encountered the Navisadors, but I can't say for certain. Time has come. And here we have the Garador. So yeah, they brought back the Garador as well, and he's blind again. Like, so many enemy types they're bringing back in this remake, it's insane. It can also counter this uh, Garador, and apparently it's not a uh, an instant kill counter. It's just a regular counter, but it might take up like half of your durability in order to counter this enemy. But uh, the Plaga is still mounted to this enemy's back, as you can see right there. So I still question why uh, Garadors are invulnerable to flash grenades when their Plaga is clearly exposed. I, I hope they provide a reason for that. But uh, you can see right here, it's not an instant kill, which is interesting. Although, in the original version of Resident Evil 4, when Garadors did their uh, typical uh, flailing attack, it wouldn't kill Leon instantly. However, when they did the running attack and they made contact with Leon, it would kill him instantly because they would impale his head. So it's possible he's going to have attacks like that. And I just hope he's still as menacing as how he was in the original version of Resident Evil 4. And there might be armored variants of this enemy, so the Plaga will be exposed on his back. And it looks like we have the uh, the lab area, or the, the, the actual island area, from uh, Resident Evil 4 right here. And it looks like, uh, just like with Sherry, from uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake, where uh, Claire just leaves her here for the time being. Leon's probably going to be doing the same, and so this is where he'll be uh, exploring the island possibly looking for uh, a remedy for Ashley's condition, something in, like, Luis's notes, or anything to understand exactly how to get rid of the Plaga, which will relate to the special radiation. 
And uh, it looks like there are keys. So it looks like in order to gain access to this room, you have to find key cards and swipe them. And it looks like there's uh, emblems on top of this key card slot. I told you. And here's the Krauser fight, so they've turned this uh, QTE fight into an actual fight now, like they said. Hmm. Like I told you. It looks like the yeah the deflections still take off durability. It's so funny how um, it takes off durability on Leon's knife, yet not Krauser's knife. And I'd be curious to, to see if you can actually get Krauser's knife when he dies, and you have like infinite durability for like the rest of the game, or maybe it's like you get Krauser's knife as a new game plus item, and it has infinite durability. But it's still silly either way that Leon's knife would break, yet not Krauser's knife. It looks like he has uh, QTEs as well, which is cool. So he, he does the, uh, the roundhouse kick, albeit in Resident Evil 4, um, Krauser did a roundhouse plus reverse roundhouse kick. He did two kicks as part of a double kick combo against Leon, but here he's just doing the typical roundhouse kick. And uh, in Resident Evil 4, the knife was the strongest tool to use against Krauser, so I wonder if that's preserved right here. Was Leon slashing just then? I can't tell if he was slashing, it looks a little interesting, or that's just part of the uh, typical movement animation when he's aiming his knife, and we still don't know exactly how knife combat works when you're just using it as a typical weapon, rather than for deflection purposes. Okay, this is a grab animation right here, so this is not a uh, animation that cues the end of the fight, just like in the original version of Resident Evil 4. This is an actual grab animation that Krauser does. And I'm not sure what it's showing right here. Is that supposed to be, like, uh, Amber? And, and there's, like, skeletons inside as well. Are, are those supposed to be the Plagas? I think those might be the Plagas, but why are they inside of Amber? It, it's it, it's supposed to be amber from trees, not here. This is interesting. It's like some kind of fossilized resin or something. I mean, like, in the original version of Resident Evil 4, the plagas were fossilized within stone fragments or something, but here it's like actual amber from... like. The, so I'm guessing they were around during the dinosaur era, and we know, like, a lot of ancient organisms were preserved inside of amber... And that, that is a real thing with, with Amber, but it looks like it's a similar case right here, only I don't really see how there could be Amber here if there aren't any trees around, because these plagas were underground, and that's why they were um, vulnerable to sunlight, because they were fossilized. So, interesting how they're inside of this special resin right here. Hmm, and we have uh, Leon, he's convulsing because the plaga infection is taking hold. I'm guessing it's also due to Sadler's doing. And here it is, the Novisador. Yeah, I did not expect this enemy to return, but I hope to God they're as well designed as the Novisadors from the original version of Resident Evil 4. Now, admittedly, the invisible Novisadors were bad. But at least the shotgun was good at knocking them over. However, when you had no the invisible Novisadors just bouncing all over the walls, uh, the shotgun was the only way to knock them over, and also, uh, they just, they were very ambiguous with their hit detection at times, and, uh, you know, like, trying to kill them with the knife was just not really worth it. I mean, it could be with, like, the first Nabisador, but, like, the rest were just not really worth it. And it's just, you I know, mean, like, they, they also move incredibly fast as well, and they could transition between services far faster than you're expecting. And you couldn't kill them instantly, like you could with the flying Navisador, because when you shot the flying Navisador out of the air, they died instantly, which was really well designed because there were so many of them. And if they decided to fly, it was their fault, they had to pay the price, and you could knock them over with the shotgun and kill them instantly. So well designed. And then when they were on the ground and you knocked them over, they didn't die instantly. But, you know, at least the, the, the flying Novisador had less health compared to the invisible Novisador. And there were ways of provoking them to actually uh, fly, but it was pretty risky uh, trying to do so in uh, Resident Evil 4. But, uh, oh, and it looks like uh, you can see Sadler right there. So Sadler is accompanying the Novisadors here. Interesting. That's very interesting, so I'm guessing he summons the Navistador to take Ashley away or something? Might be that. 
this time. It has to be different. Hmm. Now, I'm guessing this is supposed to be the special radiation therapy, or like radiation uh, cure that Luis developed because it also took place on on a seat as well. Um, or is this supposed to introduce the regenerators? I, I was really hoping they would show the uh, the regenerators, like just a brief snippet of the regenerators in this trailer, because I want to see how they are, but I'm guessing they're leaving it as a surprise. They don't want to spoil it because they know that the regenerators are the most anonymous enemy and like the most iconic enemy ever in Resident Evil 4, and so they want to preserve their iconic nature by not showing them in this trailer. But uh, that's okay. But it, it, it would have still been cool either way if they showed the regenerators here. And that's it. And then they said a special demo's coming soon, so I can't wait for that. But yeah, th that was a really good trailer. That was definitely a trailer worth getting excited over. It, sh it showed actual gameplay. It showed new Capcom taking risks, even though um, most likely, uh, given their stupidity, they'll make them worse, or they'll do something to screw the player over and just make them terrible. But... You know, hopefully it'll probably not be the case and they'll learn, but, you know, they haven't learned how to make a good Resident Evil game since Resident Evil 2 Remake, so that remains to be seen. And, of course, Resident Evil Village's development team was the stupidest development team ever. So, uh, yeah, it remains to be seen what this game will be like. But, yeah, the demo, oh, I'm going to be really excited for it when it comes out. But, yeah, that has been the third trailer. So stay tuned for future content involving Resident Evil 4 Remake. Thank you all for watching, and you take care now.